start again. Rather than go through another rowing and a power brief specific drill, as we're in the taper phase to the British Online Rowing Championships, I thought I'd go into three quick lessons all based around using the power brief for indoor rowing events, but they're fairly applicable to any endurance events. The first lesson I'd like to talk about is the power brief is essentially a resistance trainer. Like any resistance training for an endurance event, it should be secondary to the actual sport specific training that you're doing. So you should use the power breathe after you've done your rowing, your cycling, your swimming, or your running. The same as you would with weights. So, to summarize, train specifically for your sport first, use the power breathe second. The second lesson is it's all about functional strength. You're not trying simply to get the biggest score that you can on the side of this little machine here. You're trying to improve on a constant incremental basis, but make sure the training you're doing on the power brief serves your sport rather than just your score on the power brief. And the third is, as with any other resistance training, taper to the event. I've got the British Online Rowing Championships on Saturday, Last night, I turned this down from a four, which is the highest I ever have it on, down to a three. And tonight, which is Wednesday, will be the last night I use it before Saturday's warm up. Basically, those are the three lessons. Summarize, make sure that you do your sport specific training before your power breathe training. Secondly, don't simply go for the biggest power brief score that you can. It's all about the functional strength that power brief provides. And thirdly, taper to an event. Thanks very much for watching. I'll speak to you soon.